In this video, I'm going to show you how to handle a volume integral over a function that depends on dimensions in the volume. As a simple example, let's simply begin with the following definition. If I ask you to take the volume integral of something, the integral over the volume of some unit of the volume dv, I'm basically asking you to do a very large sum of very tiny pieces of the overall volume. And in the simplest case, that would simply be equal to the actual volume in question. So for instance, if I were to ask you to start with a cube and integrate little pieces of the cube until you added them all up, I would then expect that you would be able to get the total volume of the cube. So as an example of this, let's say we want to find the volume of a cube using this technique. We know from simple mathematics that the volume of a cube is given by the product of the lengths of its three sides. And so if the sides are each of length L, the volume of a cube is just L cubed. Now to demonstrate that this integral over a volume of a tiny piece of the volume will give you the same answer, what you can do is you can write down the volume integral of a tiny little piece of a cubic volume now, tiny little pieces of uh, a cubic volume will actually simply be little pieces in dx times little pieces in dy and little pieces in z. So a volume integral is really three integrals, one over the x-coordinates, one over the y-coordinates, and one over the z-coordinates, adding up tiny little pieces of x, y, and z along each dimension. So let's write that out. This becomes an integral over x, an integral over y, and an integral over z of dx, dy, and dz, these tiny little pieces of the x, y, and z coordinates within the volume. Well, in order to do this in integration, we have to know the limits of each coordinate x, y, and z. Well, the limits of the x coordinate would say go from 0 to the length of the side corresponding to the x direction. And for the y coordinate, it would go from, again, 0 to the length corresponding to the y direction, and from 0 to the length corresponding to the z direction. OK, well, let's do the x integral first. That's simply going to be equal to 0 to l dx. And we'll put these other two integrals over here, dy and dz. The integral of dx is just equal to x evaluated between 0 and l. And we still have our other two integrals over here, whose limits I'll leave off just for brevity. Well, this is just equal to l minus 0. So in the end, this is just equal to l. And then we have two integrals left, both of them from 0 to l and 0 to l. And they're very much the same. The integral of dy from 0 to l is just y evaluated between l and 0, and that's again just l. And then finally for dz, it's the same thing, it's just l. And we recover what we expect it to get, which is that the volume of a cube is equal to the length of its sides cubed. Instead, what if you're asked to integrate over a spherical volume, taking small pieces of the sphere and summing them up to get the total sphere? Well, in that case, you'd expect to get the total volume of the sphere, which we know from mathematics is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed, where capital R is the radius of the sphere. But let's, let's see if we can recover that from doing the volume integral. Without explaining why, the pieces of the volume integral for a spherical geometry are a term that's r squared dr in little pieces of the radius, sine theta d theta in little pieces of this polar angle theta, which is with respect to the z-axis, and Finally, an azimuthal angle piece, d phi, where the azimuthal angle is an angle around the z-axis. Well, this actually becomes three separate integrals. One over the limits of the radius, which go from 0 to r. One over the limits of the theta angle, which goes from 0 to pi, pointing from the positive z-axis back to the negative z-axis. And finally, over the azimuthal angle, which goes all the way around the z-axis, and so it goes from 0 to 2 pi radians. And again, that's of r squared 
dr sine theta d theta d phi. Okay, let's actually do the integral. We have three integrals that we have to do in order to integrate over the volume pieces of a sphere. We have the r integral that goes from 0 to capital R of r squared dr. We have the theta integral that goes from 0 to pi of sine theta d theta. And we have the azimuthal angle integral that goes from 0 to 2 pi over little pieces of the azimuthal angle d phi. And let's evaluate each of these integrals one at a time. Well, this is just one-third r cubed evaluated from 0 to r. Then we have the integral of sine theta d theta, which is equal to negative cosine of theta evaluated from 0 to pi. And finally, we have perhaps the easiest integral, which is just over d phi. And that gives us phi evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. Let's start with the first evaluation. This one's fairly straightforward. We wind up with 1 third capital R cubed minus 1 third of 0 cubed, which is just 0. So that's our first piece. And this is already looking promising. We have a 1 third, we have an R cubed, just like we expected to see appear appear in the original definition of the volume of a sphere. The second piece, we have negative cosine of theta evaluated from 0 to pi. And that's going to give us minus of minus 1 minus 1, because cosine of theta is equal to 1. And that's just equal, that whole thing is equal to 2. So we'll just jot that in there. That's just equal to 2. And then finally, we have phi evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. Well, it's just 2 pi minus 0, which is 2 pi. And so if we multiply all of these together, we wind up with 4 thirds pi r cubed. Great. So we can do volume integrals. And now, imagine you have a function that actually varies either as a function of r, theta, or phi, that you then have to integrate over the volume of a sphere. Well, that boils down to doing a triple integral from 0 to the radius, 0 to pi for the theta angle, and 0 to 2 pi for the phi angle of this function of r, theta, and phi over r squared dr sine theta d theta d phi. Plug in your function, do your integrals, and you get your answer. And I'll leave that as an exercise for the student.